our Facebook, our, our um, website as well, if that's all right with everyone. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Um, what I'd like to do is just let people know in general about what is your, uh, what's your push to get school districts to buy new electric buses, why? Yeah, so uh, I guess it starts with um, the um, Volkswagen emission scandal, uh, which you might recall from uh, 2015, uh, the company Volkswagen uh, installed or executives within the company installed uh, defeat devices within uh, about 590,000 of their vehicles, uh, their diesel powered vehicles, which were sold as uh, environmentally friendly uh, in the US due to their uh, supposedly low emissions. This defeat of a device was a software program that would basically kick in uh, when it recognized that the vehicles were being tested and would run uh, much lower emissions, but actually during actual you know, street operation, the um, you know, nitrogen oxide uh, emissions of these vehicles would be between nine and upwards of 40 times the legal US maximum. Uh, so they got in a, a huge amount of trouble, uh, the EPA, um, charged them with uh, violating the Clean Air Act and uh, Federal Trade Commission also filed suit against them. Uh, the result was that uh, by 2017, over the course of three separate settlements, uh, Volkswagen had committed to um, basically settling for $14.9 billion, uh, most of which was for recalling and modifying the vehicles themselves. But approximately $4.9 billion of that went to, uh, was uh, meant to go to programs to uh, mitigate the impacts that diesel emissions uh, have had. Uh, so $2 billion going to promote the use of zero emissions uh, vehicle technology, uh, technology and vehicles and infrastructure, and $2.9 billion allocated the states to fully remediate the excess nitrogen oxide emissions uh, from the um, diesel vehicles. Uh, Florida's share of that program was $166 million, which would be distributed over 10 years. And we've uh, been advocating that, um, and we were one of the initial organizations uh, that strongly advocated that that funding, those funds go towards the establishment of a fund that would help school districts replace their uh, outdated school, um, yeah, school buses, uh, which are 100% or basically primarily diesel uh, in the state uh, with electric school buses. In the 2018, 2019 fiscal year, uh, there were no electric school buses in use in any county in uh, the state of Florida. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons to switch to um, uh, electric vehicles. And I think Maria can start with some of those um, reasons right now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Maria, what would, what would the advantage be if you have, if a school district has a fleet of old diesel buses, how would replacing them with newer uh, electric vehicles, how would that improve our air quality and uh, carbon emissions and so forth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, it's good, for example, that the Florida Department of Environmental Protection announced that the school districts in especially the most polluted and populous regions, because, you know, it's first of all, let's start by saying that it doesn't affect everyone the same, right? We know that black and brown communities are disproportionately affected by these issues, right? Um, um, so now we know that uh, based on fuel uh, savings, the diesels will uh, get... Um, uh, I'm sorry, um, I'm lost in my numbers right here. But um, so we know that uh, we have right now $350,000, but we have a 25% uh, match on the county. So we're gonna pay mo less money for this uh, diesel buses that at the, uh, the beginning, we thought that they were very, very expensive. And uh, these diesel buses, they're not only going to contribute to climate change, but they pro produce ad atmospheric pollution, which is going to harm young children and contribute to breathing conditions such as asthma, which is the main uh, cause of children absenteeism in school. Um, so we know right now that with a situation like the COVID, not only the, the children that were already in situations that they get sick already because uh, of these conditions, now it's even more important that this is fair for these children to be in clean air and have situations that they can uh, 
properly recover. We don't even know the long-term effects of COVID in children. So this is why for black and brown children, um, this is uh, such an important issue to uh, at attend right now. So school districts might say, well, we are used to just buying these diesel buses. We probably have a deal with the manufacturers. It'll be really expensive to switch to electric vehicles. What would you say would be to, you know, how would you respond to a school district that said, it's just too expensive to do what you're asking? Well, right now we have money because of the, uh, of the Volkswagen uh, settlement, we have money that is put specifically for this right this is this is basically like reparations done to these communities right so this is money that is put specifically for this this money cannot be used for nothing else it has a day that has to be included and on the long term is going to be beneficial for the school the children are going to be more days in school the children are going to get in there uh getting more access getting better grades so I, this is a win-win situation I mean, it's not that you know this money uh, can be put in something else this money is specifically uh put for this uh solution and where are you, oh i'm sorry zach go ahead Oh, I was just going to mention that the um, current, so the iter current iteration of the program, there were, there were two iterations. Uh, the first year, uh, DEP only put $5 million in the program, and they um, you know, put out uh, for respondents, they said that you could only apply for up to 10 buses, and they didn't require any cost match at all. So basically, the buses would be replaced for free. Uh, this year, they are asking for a cost match requirement, but uh, that is just 25%. So even though um, you know, electric buses and the infrastructure necessary to keep them charged uh, can be pretty pricey, um, it can be upwards of $350,000 uh, for the bus and infrastructure together. Uh, when you only are paying 75% uh, of that, or sorry, if you're only paying 25% of that, uh, it's significantly lower even than the cost of a new diesel bus, which runs the average about $110,000. Uh, there's also considerations when it comes to cost. So, uh, the fuel expense um, for a de uh, an electric vehicle is much lower. Electric vehicles do have maintenance costs, but it's only just replacing the battery. And uh, generally, that's the main thing that you have to do. Uh, so a diesel bus costs about $1 per mile to maintain. Electric bus, only about 70 cents per mile. And the fuel costs for a diesel bus, um, obviously, much, much, much higher than uh, the costs for just electricity. Uh, there was a great study that came out a while ago, uh, which uh, noted that the net present value for school electric school buses that uh, participate in uh, a type of program called vehicle to grid, um, you know, the replacement value of that was about $6,000 per seat in net present value uh, over the, and you know, that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, we don't have vehicle to grid here. It's something that might come down the pike eventually, but Overall, the logic, uh, the economic logic of replacing clean buses is extremely sound. It's just there's more of an upfront cost, and now that upfront cost is basically being eliminated. So, how what are you doing to ask either local activists or local school districts to get on board with this plan? So we're, so we're we asking. Did, oh, sorry, go on, Marie. No, we have done. Uh, this is not a new issue for us. The Florida Conservation Voters Educational Fund which is the parent organization of CHISPA, has been, waiting, uh, has been working with this issue in the communities for more than two years now, since, since the uh, lawsuit uh, started to be. And one thing that we did was uh, reach out to communities and, and invite them to get their uh, comments on this. And we, got, and we got thousands of comments on this, like parents and communities are really uh, on board with this. Like when you see that one of the, out of 10 children in Florida has asthma or asthma relation related uh, uh, conditions, you understand why. So the other things that we've been doing is uh, engaging uh, school board members, uh, mothers, uh, parents in those schools, and engaging them and giving them this same uh, this same uh, information. Many of them uh, know, don't even know that this is coming, don't even know that they have the right to speak up on their issues, but they are being their lives are being affected every day by it. So that's, that's one of the things that we're doing. We're having this conversation with school board members, with parents, um, and with concerned citizens. And if people want to get involved or want to find out more information, where would you direct them? 
Carson and, and Tricia, do you have the, the website that we can give them? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do want to make a note too, Sean, today we are hosting a webinar for the uh, latest round. That'll be at two o'clock today. Um, we pretty much uh, invited a lot of the school districts. We focused on the on 10 uh, respondents who already show have shown an interest and have put applications before uh, for round one. Um, so really a lot of um, just outreach with the schools, um, as well as pushing our members to uh, reach out to their schools as well. So that's about, you know, 100 emails to the, to the decision makers there. Um, and we will continue to push resources until the January 19th deadline for this application period. And can you repeat your question, Sean? I think uh, Maria mentioned something at the end oh. there. It, it may be if if you are just if if people want to find out more if they want to get involved and they want to encourage their local school districts to apply for this what can they do right they can uh, of course uh, submit a public comment to their school board speak with their school board members um, and and really just reiterate the importance of this I think especially this has to be part of the conversation as we talk about uh, returning to brick and mortar and things of that sort we also have um, a website in uh, Florida Conservation Voters, especially under CHISPA, that is called Clean Buses for Healthy Niños, that they can sign up on the website and then they will get all the emails or all the updates on the campaign. So just go to the Florida Conservation Voters CHISPA and our different uh, media of sites, of course, the Facebook, the Instagram and things like that. And we will be periodically updating and inviting uh, the public, not only elected officials, but mothers, parents, you know, grandmas that uh, live close to these districts and this issue is part of their everyday lives um, so they can uh, keep engaged and, and keep you really moving forward the, the reality that uh, our children have electric buses and we get rid of this um, old um, diesel fleets. Thank you. I see the web, the web link that Carson just sent. So I appreciate that. Is there anything else that I haven't touched on that people should know about your, your campaign? I would like to, you know, just kind of um, talk about this program, this grant matching program as kind of a model for what climate action looks like. Um, so while it was brought on by, you know, some wrongdoing by VW and really kind of was a catalyst for uh, big infrastructure changes and requirements and mandates that we really need to make uh, big changes that are required to act on climate. And I think right now, um, a program like this is especially prevalent, prevalent as more and more municipalities go uh, make the commitment to 100% renewable energy. And this can certainly play a play a part in that. And I think this can be a, uh, a model to follow for, um, you know, county infrastructure updates, uh, counties and cities that want to adopt more electric vehicles. So we're really just excited to see this, uh, see the wheels hit the ground and, and start rolling. Well, great. I appreciate it. Oh, I, I no, no. Also that, you know, this, this, when we put out the opportunity to uh, communities to put comments and you have responses like, you know, thousands of comments, right? People really care about these issues. Floridians really care about the quality of air, the quality of water, right? This is, this is at the core of our uh, identity, I guess, as Floridians across, doesn't matter if you are Latino, you're black, you're, you're white, right? This is really an issue that matters, that touches everyone's life and we can make a difference. Um, and that's why we really are taking this close to our heart and really uh, trying to raise a uh, next generation of healthy children. Great. Thanks to everyone for your help today. I appreciate it.